A couple of weeks ago, a viewer asked me this. Can you test external USB music card with remote Sound Blaster X5 Surround 5.1 Pro? It's very cheap, maybe not cheapest, but cheap, and I got this card. I am curious, is it acceptable or bad sound card in 2020? Well, Michaela, today's your lucky day, because I have one. So let's find out how good it is in this review. Now I think that Michaela made a, made a bit of an error there because it's 2021 and it isn't 2020 anymore. But that really doesn't matter because, well, here it is. It's the Creative Labs USB Sound Blaster X5 Surround 5.1. If you've been paying attention, you'll notice this is not the Pro version. But I'll get back to that a bit later on. Now this product is aimed at the entry level, at the laptop market of users. It isn't aimed at the mainstream users. And why is it? Well, it's for those people who have a laptop and will have some humming or buzzing going on and they want to get rid of it. And for this product is excellent because the digital to analog converter or the product itself is outside of the computer case where all the humming and buzzing or electromagnetic interference is going on. So if you're in the Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting or whatever conference call meeting you're, you're in, this may be a really good option to get rid of those annoying humming and buzzing sounds. There's also another group that's, well, maybe interested in this product, and those are the people who want to turn their old laptop in an HTPC or a home theater PC, and they want to add 5.1 surround sound to that system. Now there are several versions of websites on the English, US and even Dutch version of the creative website that will say something about this sound card. Some of them say it does support Dolby, some say it supports Dolby and DTS, some say they don't uh, support anything, uh, but it's all because of the drivers and it seems like creative don't have their own story straight because the pro version does support Dolby and DTS, whereas the normal version, which is the version I have here, doesn't support Dolby or DTS. Now, for Dolby to work, you need to install the SBX software, which isn't available for the regular version. Now, how do you know if you have the right version or the, <laughs> the pro version? Well, you need to take a look at the hardware itself. Because inside, on every Sound Blaster product or every creative product, you will see a little code, which is the SB code, and this one says 1090. Now, if you want to have the Pro version, you have to go for the SB1095, which is sadly isn't the version that I have. Otherwise, internally, the hardware is exactly the same. So what kind of hardware are we talking about? Well, inside you will find a Creative CA189, one of the lower class, lower end DSPs that Creative has on offer. The CA189 is, according to Creative themselves, a highly integrated, high performance system on a chip designed specifically for a range of lower end products. The CA189 is essentially a RISC processor which is able to handle sound at 48, 96 and 190 kHz and it can do this at 24 bits. The digital to analog converter used is the Cirrus Logic CS4361 which is 24 bits and it can automatically detect the sampling rates up to 192 kHz. The analog to digital converter used is the Cirrus Logic CS5345, which can convert analog to digital with 24 bits and 192 kilohertz again. There are four TDA1308 Class AB stereo headphone drivers made by NXP or Philips. One is for the headphone out and three are for the center subwoofer, front and rear speakers. Class AB doesn't mean it's a subchip and that Class A would be better. No, Class AB means it's a more efficient than a standard Class A. 
and it has better amplifying capabilities than a Class B amp. So it's the best of both worlds. And if you're wondering what the big chip is, well that's a tiny 4 megabit, not byte, flash memory module to store the firmware on. So the components aren't that bad, but you can tell it was designed at the lower end of the market in mind. And this is what the driver interface looks like. It is very barren, very basic, but it gets the job done. What is interesting to see is that you can change the USB connection speed from high speed to full speed. Normally this is done by a little switch on the bottom of a external sound card, but here you can set it via the software. Now, despite what the name says, high speed is a lot faster than full speed. So when you're using it, stay using it on high speed, because if you're going to put it at full speed, you won't be able to use 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. It will detect the speakers automatically. For instance, I now have the headphones enabled, but when you have everything attached, you can select the speakers that you would want. You also have the AX effects, the x CMSS 3D, of course the crystallizer, restore defaults, and enable mic effects. Now what is interesting to see, you would expect there to be a long list of all kind of effects, but it's just the concert hall. So these are the driver interface or the audio control panel as Creative says. So what were the listening sessions like? Well, I wasn't that impressed by the audio qualities of the x Surround 5.1 Pro. Overall, it was as good as an onboard solution, which means it wasn't bad, but it was uninspired. Like someone really tired has to do one last chore to get the job done. And it does get the job done, but just barely. The bass is there, but it's not as oomphy as I'd like it to be. The middles were there, as with all creative products. Now the highs were nice and clear, not too sharp. The stereo picture or sound stage was rather narrow to my liking. I'm guessing that the stereo crosstalk isn't that good. Something that Rightmark would sure shine a light upon. So let's head over to Rightmark. The results Rightmark gave aren't that impressive. It gets an average with general performance. The frequency response is excellent, which is impressive. I haven't seen that many cards recently that got an excellent in the frequency response. And Miguela, your feeling that it cuts out at 17 or 18 kHz isn't true, as you can see in this graph. But what did happen, I think, is that you forgot to set the card at 24 bits and 96 kHz. So if you switch to there, maybe that will improve the sound. But the rest of the scores are poor and average, which is a bit sad to see. Because the results from the headphone were so disappointing, I retested it, but this time with the output from the front speakers. But those results were a bit better. The noise level was slightly better, as was the dynamic range. There was a bit of distortion going on, and the stereo crosstalk was also a bit better. But since the results are so close, I really can't draw any conclusions from the difference. And now for my conclusion, is the Creative Surround X5 5.1 any good? Well, it gets the job done. That's the main theme of this sound card. It just gets the job done. I mean, the listening sessions were mediocre. It got the job done. The right mark results were, well, rather nice, uh, average. The driver interface gets the job done. It is very barren, very basic, but it gets the job done. So would I advise it if you're going to use it with your high-end uh, headset or your high-end 5.1 surround kit? No, this is not something you want to have. If you're going to use it for maybe say the HTPC with 5.1 surround, uh, this may be an option. If you're going to use it for those uh, pesky <laughs> Zoom or Teams meetings where you want to have a well bit better sound or at least a humming and buzzing free sound, this may be an option. But not for the new price, because it was still being sold until June this year, over here in the Netherlands, for about 90 euros, which is way too expensive. Now, if you can find one second hand for, let's say, 30 euros for the pro version, maybe 10, 20 for the uh, regular version, which is the version I have here, it may be an option. 
So for those kind of situations, this is a nice option, but I'm going to use it myself. Well, no, because I have another digital tool analog converter uh, right over here. The Sennheiser GSX-1000, which is what the next video will be about. So I hope to see you in that video. See you then. Bye bye.